90% proficient in your community and, and let us know a little bit about your community. Sometimes people use certain things as excuses for why they can't do something or other. <laughs> so um, just love to know a little bit more about your, your setting, demographics and that kind of thing. Um, I do not have that right in front of me, but we well, um, are. Yeah, just the, the general. <laughs> yeah, we're an extremely small school system, one elementary, one primary, one middle, one high. Um, we average around 20 or 200 students per grade level with about 10 teachers at each grade. Um, we are Title I schools. Um, it, we're an extremely poor school system. I would say that our school system is probably one of the biggest employers in the county. Um, we don't have industry, no industry, no large industry, none. Mm -hmm. Very rural, rural Georgia. Mm -hmm. There was, as far as I know, no consultant who came to your school. You didn't watch 150 to 200 hours of video. Tell us about what it took for you and your staff um, to learn how to do Reading Simplified. Um, everybody was um, given a subscription to Reading Simplified, and they worked through that on their own. Um, and then uh, I have kind of come. I've been the kind of the person that's compiled everything into one location yes. on our drive, our Google Drive. And so I've shared out that document with everybody. Um, we've done a little bit of professional development at the beginning of the year. Um, I do a lot of um, screencastifies and go over things with them and send it out. Teachers look like that. But then I also go into the classroom and kind of show teachers like, okay, what do we need to do if a child has a reading error when they're reading? Mm -hmm. um, what does it look like to do switch it? Um, we've had an extreme amount of turnover in our um, paraprofessionals mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. And so wow. um, having those videos on the scope and sequence that I've created mm -hmm. where they can just actually go and click it. And that video of me in the classroom demonstrating it is has mm -hmm. been great because so many people just want to be able to see. I think that's the number one thing I hear from teachers all the time. I need to see it in the classroom setting. And then um, literally I have my phone on during reading group times and I tell them, hey, you hear um, something's not going right, text me. And so I'm literally popping in and out. <laughs> or make a video. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that has been the biggest, um, probably I think to help the teachers in that aspect, just giving them that. And if I didn't know, I emailed you, Marnie, <laughs> to, to get the help. I well, needed. yeah, but you didn't email me a lot. How did you learn it, Kimberly? Because it sounds um, like you're doing a great job in, with instructional leadership, which is this common thread through the schools that we're going to present in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've got a couple other schools I'm going to be pestering. If I haven't pestered you yet, schools, you know, you may know who you're talking um, about. There's almost always a good instructional leader there who's um, rallying the troops and giving support. I just, you, but you didn't you didn't come to us you know to the university and spend a, a whole summer learning it or whatever no i don't i didn't um honestly my passion for reading i have constantly researched i would say it really got off the ground in during covid um mm -hmm. i needed help teaching kids how to read and so I did tremendous amounts of free PD back then because nobody was going anywhere. Everybody was staying at home and PD was extremely cheap back then. So I did, you know, really got in on some topics then, but put, doing Reading Simplified in the classroom, I mean, even if I didn't have the background, it's so simple and it's a step-by-step -step process that it just makes life so easy. And then um, I think my I wanted to be for the teachers what, what I didn't have. Um, mm -hmm. If I had questions, we didn't have an instructional coach. This is the first time in our school system that we've had a reading instructional coach. We've never had mm -hmm. the money for it. Mm -hmm. And so um, literally we would be going back classroom to classroom asking for help. And if nobody knew, we just kind of did what we thought was best. Um, and so I wanted to be for them what I never had. Um, yeah. I want them to see the joy in it and also just to know that it can be so simple. We don't have to add a whole lot to get kids to read. A great summary. And then if anybody is ever wondering about the value of a strong instructional coach, just check out this data, you know, look at that 79% 
nonsense word fluency, correct letter sounds to 92.7, almost 93%. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> we do have a new mentoring teacher, a new teacher mentoring program at our school mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. our assistant superintendent, which she comes in. Um, like I said, because we're extremely rural school. So an assistant superintendent has many jobs and many hats. Um, and so she would actually come into the classroom. But as far as me, given the professional development, me just being in the classroom, um, I would go in and if teachers didn't understand, I would, and I've already taught reading simplified in the classroom, which was a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I would go into the classrooms and they would say, hey, this kid is just not progressing with switch it. What would you do? And I would say, mm -hmm. do you mind if I just take over the group and sit in your chair and just show you? Because Love it. Showing is a lot of times it's in the in the questions that we use to get kids the information yes. out of the kids. It's yes. the questioning techniques. Yes. And so that's not something that you can read about a lot of times. It's just yeah. something you got to watch. I think that has been the best bang for our buck. Yeah, I just want to kind of keep hammering it at home. Your scores are in the high 70s and the 80 percentiles, and that's not what we're seeing across the country. But you were even though you're passing most of the many, many districts, place, uh, schools, states, you were like, mm, I think we can do better. And even though you've got scores in the 90, you're already talking about next year. Uh, so I love that. Now, um, Shelly, uh, there's some folks here that don't know anything about Reading Simplified. What would it look like in your classroom, your general ed um, kindergarten classroom? There's a lot of different ways you could go about doing Reading Simplified. How did it look? What did it look like on a typical day for you? Um, so we do this in small group and my pair mm -hmm. pro would start off with doing the build it and she would do mm -hmm. the support it, the build it and that. Mm -hmm. And then in my group, I would do the handwriting to start with mm -hmm. and then um, blend as you read. And I would kind of piggyback, piggyback off of what she was doing just to see like where they were um, with where she's at. And we would go from there with the passages and, um, so that was pretty much, it was just me and her. We would do that in small room. It was very simple. So there's not a whole lot, but I knew exactly what we were going to do the next day. My pair of knows exactly what she's going to do. Mm -hmm. And even it's good for the student. And so. And we oh yeah, the, the repetition of this the activities helps reduce the amount of time talking about this activity direction. Number one, number two, <laughs> number three, where were we? Yeah. You know? yes. And I heard. It was so simple, like Shelly was talking about, it was very, very simple for our children that struggled, whether they struggled mm -hmm. with attention or they struggled with their working memory. It was so simple. But what I loved more, as much as that or more, was it also met the needs of my upper learners. Like I could let them take that passage and keep going. Mm -hmm. If they were finished mm -hmm. with that, I can move on and their group could go even further. So that was what was so cool for me when I was in the classroom. Like if they were ready to do sort it, we could go on to sort it with them. Or if they were ready to go on to the advanced code, we can move on. And it was okay that my other group was doing something else. But for me, I did not have to have multiple resources to meet the needs yes. of the lower learner and the upper learner. And I'm most impressed with that because I've taught for a long time and I've never like had a program that advanced both spectrum of children, mm -hmm. no matter where they were. And yes, so as, as silly as it sounds, that simple little cart that I have right beside me, I can, you know, just be using CBC words at the front of my deck or I can be back in the CVCC or long O, long E, whatever it is. But that's just what's it's just been a huge game changer. It was for me. I had a very difficult year, year 28, and mm -hmm. it was very, very hard. And I thought, I don't know that I'm going to make it through this. Um, mm -hmm. And if I had not have had your curriculum, I know those children mm -hmm. would not have, they would not have succeeded. But, but I can see now I'm able to follow those children. I've been watching them through their school mm -hmm. years because I'm still mm -hmm. in the same district where they're in school. And it's pretty awesome because there's children that really, really struggle are still finding success because I was able to take them through your program. That's awesome. I, when I was in, I taught inclusion this year and even my SPED kids were getting it just as much as- Obviously. Possible. Yeah. But, yeah. You, they're, they're, you're basically, practically at 100% with all of your kids across the board. <laughs> Otherwise you couldn't be just bouncing around, especially yeah. Lori, when you've got this spread of, what do you think are the range of readers that you support? You said it's K through second that you support right but then yes. in terms of their reading level what's that range during a day i might see somebody that 
does not even know a single sound and I'm starting at one sound <laughs> and then I yeah. may see a second grader who's really advanced. For example, I have one student, he started in reading words per minute, second grade, like lower twenties, he would fluctuate even into the teens, but he mm -hmm. left me in the eighties, 80 words. Per oh minute. my gosh. That's yeah. so gratifying. Yeah. And I will we'll add in to that comment that if yes. I had not worked at the 70th percent rule that you have for us, mm -hmm then I wouldn't have been able to make it that far with this student. But I see, cause you know, I've been in this kindergarten classroom for so long, I think 19 years I was in kindergarten and moving yeah. out of the regular ed room and, and to the MTSS classroom. If I had not followed that 70% rule, mm -hmm. I would have not been able to advance him. So he's going to enter into his third grade year. Now he had an amazing support system from his gen ed teacher. She was phenomenal. She mm -hmm. read with him, you know, they did a lot of small groups. She allowed her teacher cadet to read with him or him read to them. Um, so again, that teamwork was amazing. But yes, that that 70% rule was a game changer for me. That's part of what we're trying to do is accelerate students. Um, mm -hmm. They have a lot more potential than some most reading curricula acknowledges really. Um, so let's get back into that streamlined pathway then. So uh, for those of you who are new to Reading Simplified, you probably won't understand this at a glance, but the main point that I like to make is, hey, you know, it's basically 12 steps, 12 levels, and, and these teachers probably had one of these levels in their mind when they're working with a given group. Um, you know, uh, maybe Shelly had kindergarten pathway and the first grade pathway. Um, maybe Lori had to also think about sometimes the second grade pathway, but that's it. Even if, even if you're reading at the fifth grade level, you're going to be on the second grade and up pathway. And there's a lot of similarities between um, the second grade pathway and the first. And notice in first grade, so we're talking about typically developing first grade readers. We get past the gray zone, where's the basic code, short vowels, and constant digraphs, uh, reading words like hop and shop and hip and um, Pip, and Pat, and Cat, and then at that 70% mark that, that uh, Lori was just talking about, then they already get into step two here, the O sound, the O and go, and home, and boat, show, and tow. So this is uh, one tool that gives the the teacher like a, um, Got that. a schema for thinking about where her students are that makes diagnostic thinking a lot easier than a lot of the other curriculum. I think like you were saying, Laurie, where you had to like, oh, I got to go find this and oh, I got to go find that. And, yes. you, <laughs> and then also coupled with the, okay, we're going to move. Now we're ready to move. <laughs> yes. And I did see where the curriculum would spiral when I would continue mm -hmm. to move to the next vowel. And I like how you started with O and then moved to E. When I followed exactly the way you said to do it, I saw so much success mm -hmm. with those students who were ready to move if I stuck to the 70% rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so down here at the um, uh, number two, you can see the O sound, then we go to the E sound, and then A, and then I, little repeat of vowel plus E pattern, silent E, magic E, whatever you call it. And then we're into er, as in girl and bird and hurt and uh, word and earn and moving on up. Okay, so uh, Mercy asked to follow up there, I think probably more for you, Shelly, in the Gen Ed classroom. All the students met in small groups for Reading Simplified each day? Yes, every day. Oh. And they oh. are usually a ability group, so, you know, mm -hmm. talk to, to the lower ones, and so they're with their group. But that, don't, that doesn't always mean they're on the same passage. Um, I go best right. off each okay. one of them. Yes, every day we meet. And small groups. And each group and is roughly 20 minutes each. Yes. Okay. And we usually That's great. What are, what are the other kids doing? So there's a pair group, a teacher group, and then two independent groups. And usually I will do um, computers. We have a Lexia program they do, like a reading program on the computer that they do. And then the other one may be um, something with fine motor skills, or I might even just have them simply color in a picture, just something. They can do independently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fine motor development, but a little more rest, maybe. And then it's mm -hmm. so you've strategically put your teacher, your para pro in, you know, during that rotation with literacy center. So that's so you've got four groups total. 
Okay. Our pair pros always do switch it. So I would train all the pair pros on switch it. So that's what they would do. And then it's similar, it is very similar in um, first grade classrooms as well. But of course, in first grade classrooms, their independent looks a little bit different. One teacher, Miss mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hatfield, she found an amazing thing to do where she wanted to make sure she could listen to every kid every day. So she just put um, the Chromebook up and they did they she the kids actually listened or um, read the book to screencastify mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. she would play that on the board sometimes so they would have a read aloud on the board the kids absolutely loved it but then oh she was able gosh. to go back and listen to the kids read that I is so brilliant go to first grade for an hour to assist those okay. first grade teachers so those first grade That's... teachers can have long group instruction right very strategic i love it um, another uh, question that comes from Anne is, and I'm not sure what she wants you to compare it to, but she asks, is Reading Simplified a harder program? Hmm. How do you take that? It's not. It's for the teacher to learn, or let's maybe like, are you, the kids are reading harder words. So it's kind of like, how do you, how do you want to interpret that? I think they work at their level and whatever yes. they're able to achieve or whatever they're able to master, mm -hmm. then you can take them to the next level. Yes. So you, you work at whatever level they're at. Yeah, definitely. It's an easier program, but you're going to have more kids surpassing their grade level expectations because it, and it sounds crazy, but I promise you, if you try to try it, it'll work. <laughs> I like too because my children are not trying to learn so many different things. They're not trying to learn, oh, how do I play this game? Or, mm -hmm. oh, well, how do I do this manipulative? Or we, we use very, very few manipulatives or very few um, materials. And so all their brain power, all their resources mm -hmm. can go into just learning that skill. They're not trying to focus on, oh, uh, is it my turn? Or, oh, how do I move this? Or how, how does this work? They can just think about the skill that I'm teaching them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is There's good. There's a lot of it's about that too, which is very powerful. That's why I feel like your program was so wonderful. Angie wants to know if you have any English learners in your building. No, no, but oh, okay, interesting. Has, Kimberly has worked um, with a student at a different school in our district. Yes, mm -hmm. that was. Yes, we're actually, other teachers are learning in um, the elementary school and middle school. They're getting students in from other counties. And so mm -hmm. we've actually started doing some implementation of Reading Simplified with them. And that's what I love. Another thing about it, Reading Simplified, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter the age. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter the age at all. If a person cannot yeah. read, go through that scope and sequence and they will be reading. Mm -hmm. So true. I've used it with high schoolers, middle schoolers, adults. Yes. three-year-olds i would just like to say for everybody that's watching if you have never tried it it's changed my life in the way i was able to help my kids we have so many kids here in blackley that has a future now because we've used this and we believed in it so i would just i just would sit there and say don't hesitate go ahead and just try it play around with it and then be ready to implement it when school starts back mm -hmm. beautiful yeah, I mean, you're basically um, moving your students to have the need to study reading desperately, you know, less and less. It's going to be more about the higher level reading skills and um, broad reading, learning about advanced vocabulary, um, reading new genres. You're, you're just basically going to open up opportunities for the students and the teachers that we all want to have for our upper elementary students. But a lot of time we just don't because we got to still fill those holes and you're going to be filling fewer and fewer holes every year. Lori, your job is going to get easier next year, right? Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like now we have those children, you know, we, we really targeted those that need a lot of help and we can be there for them. And mm -hmm. so the, the tier one K and one teachers, that have really poured into this. It's amazing how what they've done. Mm -hmm. We joke yeah. all the time. Um, Lori and I are best friends. We've been teaching <laughs> partners forever. I said, I'm working her out of a job. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I, uh, unfortunately, it'll never happen because we always are going to have some kids that just do need that extra time. But yeah, if you could do it, you know, have an hour with the kid instead of just your 20 minutes or whatever, whatever the standard is, if you could increase that intensity for the kids that really, truly are maybe dyslexic, truly dyslexic, then they'll get the support that they need because you don't have a caseload of 150 or something like yeah. that. Mm. And um, Lori, are, are there any other, I mean, rather Shelly, excuse me. Um, do you have any uh, last thoughts or things you want to share? Um, I didn't want to say thank you to you because you made my second year way less stressful oh. than first year. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. It's, it's evident, you know, um, when I see that data, I know that there's a good leader and there's a good program and also there's a good staff. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. happen with just one of those ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's got to be, um, all of that. So thank you guys for coming here and representing your colleagues and your dear children, uh, students in the County that are working with you and must be really sharp cookies. Um, so Thanks very much for taking the time to share your story, share um, what it takes. It's not just a walk through the park, but through this collaboration and through a program that simplified things, you really are able to see outstanding growth and you know where you're headed next year. <laughs> All right. Here's to making good readers. Good night. Good day. Thanks for Thank being you. here. Yeah.